Welcome back to Here's Next Door. Thank you for joining us for another Station Rigs. We are in Nagani, Michigan, and they have an antique that we want to take a look at. This came from a super fan. His name is Alex, so let's go take a look. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. All right, and you are? I'm Brian. Brian, nice to meet you, Brian. Are you the dad? I am, Alex. All dad. right, so we got permission to put him on film for Absolutely, us. he's been uh, looking forward to it. Oh, there, Mason, I missed you in the corner. Good. Nice to meet you, Mason. <laughs> you want to show us around and tell us what you know about this truck? Yeah. All right, I'll follow you. So what is this truck? It's a 1945 American LaFrance. It looks beautiful. It looks like you guys are in the process of restoring it. Is that correct? Yep. All right, tell me what you know about this. We got it. During World War II, in case the iron mines got attacked, it was meant to outstand a World War II bomb. What? This thing is a beast then. Okay, and it has a bunch of features on it. It's like no other truck we've seen before. Can you show me what all this equipment is? Yeah, kind of. Okay. So what's this right here? That's where the pump panel is. The pump panel's on the front of the truck. That's kind of <laughs> unique. Normally they're in the mid or on the side, but this is actually in front of the truck. I don't think I've ever seen that anywhere before. These are all the outgoing here. Okay. And then the controls in the back are for the incoming. Okay. Do you have incoming on either side of the truck or just on the one side? It's on both. It's on yes. both sides? Yep. Do you have discharges on both sides? Yes, just... there's yep. one discharge in the same spot on the other side. Okay. But I see you got all your gauges or your pressure gauges, all your levers. All right, can we take a look on the inside? Yeah. And Alex, does this truck still run or is it just a showpiece? It still runs. It still runs, okay. Do you have it fully restored? Is it, can it pump water yet? No. Not yet, but you're getting there, right? Yep. You're planning on getting it redone and the pump's working? Yep. Okay, what do you got inside? There's not much. Go ahead no. and step inside, tell me around. Show me around. What's that little button on the floor? That's the siren. That's the siren, yep. okay. That's the old federal keys. Then the red light that's with the siren. Okay, yeah. red lights are just yeah. a pull switch there. Yeah. Okay, and then you got the different gauges of your speed, your temperature. Okay. Yeah. What else you got? This leads to the back lights. Okay. Then these are the headlights, the dash. This is the throttle. And that's the choke. So this is old enough that you have to use a throttle and a choke to get it started. And then you drive it like a regular truck. But some people may not know what these things are. What are those things sticking on the floor? This is the emergency brake. So then um, this is the gear shifter. How do you throw it into pump gear? Pretty sure it's down here. Okay, so underneath your leg there. So you put it in neutral, throw it into pump gear. So yeah. this is a stick shift. Yep. Okay. You gotta learn how to drive a stick shift. How old are you, Alex? 10. What do you got on the other floor panel there? Is that siren again? Yep, we have a siren switch here again and then a, just a bright dim. Okay. And the cool thing about this one is this is actually the starter button. So oh. There was no key, so you have to be good with your heel to give it some gas yeah, and you, then yeah, you hit the you. starter at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got on the floor, it tells you your shift pattern. You got your clutches, you got your, your, your valves. Uh, or your uh, buttons that don't require electric to run them. Exactly. Everything was either a, an actual lever or a few cable driven. Okay. Like the, it's all two wire wiring, so yeah. everything was simple. Yeah. And it looks like you got some hand lights up top for a scene. Yep. yep. Okay. Even the uh, built in air conditioning, the windshield just tips out. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's the best there. way to do it. It almost looks like one of those uh, chop tops that you see in one of the hot rod magazines. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, Nothing's been done to it, it is the original, but yeah, it, it is a cool look to it. What's the window back? Does that go to the back hose compartment? Do you got more guys back there? You can fit more guys right there. Okay, can we take a look? Yep. All right, I think we gotta get in the other side because this one doesn't have a door over here, right? Nope. Right in the back. Okay, yeah. you, know, you go through the back. On the LaFrance 600 series, which this one was, they started building them, I think in 41. Um, with the quad cab design, it was entry through the back. Through the, the back. So you yep. get go through the tunnel here? Yep. Okay. And there was room for three or four more guys back there. I'm kind of assuming they probably packed themselves in pretty good there. Okay. Does this actually hold a tank then too? Um, at one time you can see we have it, um, the two wood panels there now. 
Those were actually small water tanks. Okay, okay. And the seat that you have here, was that normally there or is that? Uh... No, so this is kind of refurbished for um, when we do parades. So some of our honorees can ride here, but this would have originally been hose bed okay. along with this one. And then this would have been also for some suction line. Okay. The series five and 600 that were made in the early forties were designed to be kind of sleek and not have anything on the outside. Ours is actually um, kind of out of the ordinary with the ladder rack and the hard suction on the sides. Right. Now you got a couple of different nozzles too. Alex, can you tell me about the nozzles? These we think came off of our first truck. One of your first trucks here. Okay. Yeah, our first one had the same exact looking nozzles with the same holder on them. Okay. So we're thinking they came off. Right, and those are just their standard smooth board nozzle, right? Yep. And then what's this nozzle up here in the bed? That one would looks pretty special too. This is a cellar nozzle. Okay. So you'd have the hose hooked up here. All right, so how does this work? You'd stick it into a floor or something. Yeah. Um, then you'd pull the pin, turn this for water, then the water comes out here. And down here. And then also down there. And then you move this and it would move them back and forth. That's pretty Put slick. The fire out. Yeah, so up yeah. and down would change the nozzle here and then you could spin it all, almost all the way around. Okay. You're fighting basement fires. Yeah. So you drop it through a stairwell or punch a hole in the floor, drop it in, and you can fight a basement fire without going down inside of it. So Alex, are you thinking about being a fireman as a career? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How long have you been watching the channel? Three years. Three years? So you were one of our first super fans. We really appreciate it. Thank you for inviting us out and taking a look at your truck. Can we walk around the rest of the side here and show us what's on the other side? And we believe that suction hose is the original. Wow. And it's still maintaining it. That's and awesome. And it was actually um, kind of special because there, there is brass suction hose. When this truck came out because of the timing with the war, there wasn't a lot of brass allowed to be on it because all the brass was going to the war effort for munitions. Yeah, right. So we were spe we were lucky to get this truck because of the infrastructure here, and then but most of it was just plain old steel, just yep. because that's all they had. Right. So the truck and even the fittings for the um, plumbing and stuff like that—that's mm -hmm. steel plumbing. Yep. Wow. So yeah. how heavy is this truck compared to you know some of the modern day trucks? We we haven't actually gotten it weighed, but we figure it probably weighs just as much, if not more, than even a fully loaded modern truck. <laughs> right. Right. Have you always had ladder trucks here at your fire station? Yeah. What's this thing right here? This is an old fire extinguisher that American La France made. Okay. So as you grow up and you start to learn a lot of these things, you're going to learn how to use those tools. Sometimes they put tools to turn off water valves. Sometimes they use them to go into buildings. Many times pry bars or punch bars like that, you're gonna use that in different scenarios. You gotta have them ready to go. I notice on this truck, you don't have a whole lot of storage space like the new trucks, right? You don't have the outside compartments and things. So where are you gonna carry gear back in the day? How did that all work? They put them on the sides like they, that. Yeah, Pinch put them on the sides. Where do you put all your uh, fire gear, like your helmets? And did they have air packs back then? I don't think they did when this truck nope. was nope. out. Now I hear you've had some pretty big fires in the area. Yep. Can you tell me about one of the fires that you have here? There was the Riding Hotel right over there across the street. Okay. Now it's Riding Park. Okay. But that was right there and it caught it on fire. Woo. And as we move forward, we get back to the driver's side, right? Yep. Is there anything else on the truck that you think is pretty unique? This, they kept on doing service. Okay. We don't know if they took it off or not when they sold it. Okay. Or if Columbus Township kept it on there when they had it in service. So you originally had this truck, then yep. what happened to it? We sold it to Columbus Township. Okay. How did you get it back? Um, a couple years ago, one of our guys were driving through there and they saw it sitting in a field. They asked us if they could get it back and they gave it back to us. <laughs> That's awesome. This hood is absolutely huge. What size engine does it have? It's a 12-cylinder American LaFrance engine. A 12-cylinder? Talk about fuel mileage. And American LaFrance made their own engines. Yeah. So. 
It looks like one of those engines that you would put in an aircraft that they fly with and stuff like that. Does this run on diesel? Does this run on gas? Or how does this one run? Leaded. Leaded fuel. Yep. So you gotta make your own fuel when you run this around, right? Yep. We believe it's about 358 horsepower or something. Okay. There was two models of the 12 cylinder engine and we think this is the bigger of the two. Right. And back there, 350 is pretty powerful engine yeah. to get that thing moving. With that kind of weight, everything steel, it's no wonder you need an engine that large just to Absolutely. get this thing moving. This does not like to roll. It takes us some effort to get it moving. I'm sure it takes some effort to get it to stop too. That too. <laughs> so have you been riding in it before? Yeah. Yeah? How is the ride? Is it nice and smooth? No. <laughs> Alex, this is a very beautiful truck. Thank you for inviting us out, brother. So, Mason, thanks for coming with thanks us. Coming. Brian, we appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. So, this is a, a 19... 45. 45 American France fire truck at Nagani. Now say it for me. Nagani. Nagani, <laughs> up in Upper Michigan, which is the UP. If you like what you've seen, do us a favor. Hit subscribe, hit notifications, smash those like buttons, make some comments. If you have a fire truck you wanna show off, Send us an email at watchheroesnextdoor at gmail.com. We'll get you on the schedule. We'll see you again next week. Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Thank you for joining us for another station rig. Today we're in the Gott 